Well, you saw it here first, guys and girls. I am now a photographer because I took a picture of atmospheric fog on black and white film. So to the moon we go. The stonks are rising and NFTs are surely to follow. But after I took that one, I turned my camera to the left and I wanted to take a picture of all these sheds, buildings, and houses in my neighborhood with the fog rolling in out in the distance. And I quite liked the way that this one turned out. I ended up printing this one in the dark room and it's for sale on my website if you want to pick it up. But I just like the way that the telephone pole is. It's not perfectly straight. It's crooked and it looks a little ominous. And then in the back, you can see the trees fading into the distance. And then you can also see another telephone pole that kind of looks like a cross in the back that kind of just adds to the sinister feel of the photo. And I know how a lot of people think about fog and about how it is just easy to photograph and make things interesting, but it really does add some nice layering to the image and it does add a nice atmosphere to images in general. How you doing? What you taking pictures of? This building. <laughs> it's a cool little town. Yeah, where are you from? St. Louis. Oh yeah. Yeah. Park. Oakville? Yeah. It's like you know where that's at? Yeah. It's like fifteen minutes south. I was from Webster when I was young. Really? Yeah. yeah, my buddy came down here and was taking pictures and he actually took a is that your building? The blue one. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, he took a picture of that and I was like, I need to go there. That's pretty yeah. cool. There you go. Yeah. Have you lived here your whole life, or? No, I, like I said, I was in Webster until I was fourth grade. Oh, yeah. Then we moved to Washington. Washington's cool, too. Yeah. All these places up here are cool. And what's your name? Brian. Brian Lewis Klinger. Nice to meet you. <clears throat> yeah, I like uh, how this looks. I was going to walk up there and... Is that digital or is that film? This is film. Yeah. It's four by five. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have a digital in there, but it's... A lot of people are getting into the film again. Yeah. Slow, low, slow exposure and stuff. All oh, that yeah. Kind of neat stuff. Yeah, that one, that camera ha look, has a really cool look to it. Can't really get it with digital. So, uh -huh. so this is your building? How long uh -huh. have you had that? Uh, 99. Has it looked like that the whole time? No, I painted it. Oh, did you? Yeah, it was just a cream color before. Yeah, I like that. It's cool. Oh, you like it? Yeah. I'm going to have some to get it. Some people do, some people don't. I really? It's lasted a long, that paint, I don't know what kind of, it was just cheap paint, but boy, it's lasted a long time. It really has held up well. I like it. You want to get a picture in front of it? Sure. This is a picture of a guy I used to work with in the real estate business, and he used to be in this building here. Oh, yeah? And that's a picture of him standing in front of it. What was his name? Monroe Schilling. Nice. Uh, he doesn't show a whole lot of the building, but he's standing yeah. in front of that window over there. That's cool. I'm gonna have you stand like right here for me. Okay. And just try to be kind of still for me. You can keep that in your hand, I like that. Uh -huh. uh, just because it takes a little bit to get focus. All right, stay just like that for me. And one, two, three. Perfect. Stay right there. When taking these pictures in New Haven, I got there a little bit late, so the sun was actually 
behind the hills and you can see in some of these photos that the sunlight is just peeking at the top of some of the buildings but I took this picture of the city hall on T-Max 100 as well as Ektachrome and I like the way that the black and white turned out. The Ektachrome is just a little bit too punchy for me. I just want to stick to Portra 160 right now because I know exactly how it's going to behave. I love the colors that I get from it and the way that it looks. And I just want to stick to T-Max 100 as well because I know how that prints in the dark room. I know how to process that. And I just know how it's going to look. And I think that's more important is knowing the film, knowing how it's going to act and behave other than just using all these different film stocks and being upset at the results that you get after the fact. With that said, I quite liked the portrait that I took of Lewis on Ektachrome. Um, this was the second portrait that I took and you can see that he's smiling, but I just like the way that the colors rendered a lot more. And I think that has to do with my processing of the Portra 160 because I always decide to fuck that up somehow, whether it's temperature or pouring blicks in first or doing something different. When I was developing this specific batch, the lid decided to blow off my Patterson tank and it covered me in developer and I ended up losing about 100 milliliters of developer which was super sick and I had to clean up the kitchen because we cook in the kitchen like any other person on the planet and I didn't want my food to be littered with developer and Blix and potentially kill my future wife. And then the second portrait that I ended up taking on T-Max 100 is obviously out of focus and that just had to do with me rushing and not exactly taking my time, which obviously if I could go back, I would get a much better portrait, but you can see I used some swing to try to get both eyes in focus, and I ended up missing focus. Um, but, so I show up at 3.30, it's not ready, it's all good, you know, even I was probably there, I was probably 3.35, 3.45, 9 minutes, 50, 11 A couple days later, I wanted to go to Waterloo, Illinois, which is about 25 minutes across the river from St. Louis. And I took this picture of this car and this building with a shamrock on it and this grain structure in the back a long time ago with the RZ67 and the 65 millimeter lens that I had. And I liked it, but it didn't really give a scope of the actual environment with what where that car was. So I wanted to go back and photograph that. And I thought the car was gonna be there, but it ended up not being there, which kind of sucked. But I took this first one on T-Max 100 as well with the 135 and I really liked the way that it turned out. You can kind of get a much uh, bigger scope of how this building lays on the landscape and I just like how you can see a lot more of the grain structure in the background and I love the light hitting the front of the building with the shadows falling on the interior of the building. And then the second one I took it was a little bit to the left and there was a house in the foreground. I liked the composition, but the light just wasn't doing it for me. It was just too bright and there's too many highlights and not enough shadows going on. And overall, I just really hate how it rendered the scene with the light. And then this third one that I took was down an alleyway um, to the right of the green structure. And this is probably my favorite one out of the bunch because I just like how suburban it feels, but also industrial in the background and you can see the car and the houses and the basketball hoop and then this massive grain structure in the background that's what i've been trying to do with my compositions lately is just try to layer different things and look for foreground mid ground and background and not necessarily just focus on one subject or focus on one of those things it's nice when you can add dimensions like that and it really brings to life the image as well as the subject. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is experimenting and a photographer by the name of Mark Mahaney. I found him a while back, but I really didn't get into his work until recently because I didn't think that I was very interested in editorial work or work that's in magazines, newspapers, things like that. But lately, I've been wanting to get more into that type of work because, as you know, I am a wedding videographer and photographer for my main job, and I would very much like to start doing narrative editorial type work, and I think the work that I do now kind of lends itself to that, 
So I've been looking at a lot of Mark's work and the stuff that he does for brands and magazines. And I also just picked up his book, Polar Night, which is for sale now as a second edition. But that book is totally different from his editorial work. And he went to a city in Alaska and ended up photographing there for 12 days. And it's about a city that is dark for months at a time. I forget how many days exactly, but I just love the way that he uses light and close-up detail shots of images. And he had a quote, and I can't really remember it exactly, but I'll link the interview down below. He started out as a large format photographer. He shot a lot of 4x5, and he mentioned that a lot of his shots in the beginning were very uh, stationary, very environmental portrait stuff with the subject in the middle, kind of like how I shoot right now. And he ended up switching from film to digital, and he said that it kind of changed the way that he shoots Overall, it made him much more creative. He wasn't worried about getting that perfect shot every time, and it was much more freeing to experiment with things. But it got me thinking about using light, uh, getting close up to your subject, because a lot of the times when I miss a shot or when I think that a shot could have been better, it's because I wasn't close enough to the subject. And you can see in a lot of his shots that he is extremely close, and it's not close in the sense of using a longer lens or a telephoto lens. It's close in the sense that he moved his feet closer to the subject, which I really like. And his portraits are just amazing as well. He really uses very strong light, um, off-camera lighting, off-camera flash, on-camera flash, things like that. And it brings a lot of dimension to his photos, which I really enjoy because if I can say so for myself, my Portraits are obviously getting better with time, and you expect that with more practice. But one thing that I think some of my portraits lack is that dimension with lighting because I use a lot of natural light. I hardly ever use like um, reflectors or bouncing light or artificial light. And he said in a interview that he likes to play with the light dramatically. He likes to completely block real light and use artificial light if he can. And that's just something that I want to get a little bit better at. And I experimented a little bit um, just because I wanted to with my digital camera. And it was just fun to not worry about anything, not worrying about the cost of things piling up and just experimenting with the camera a little bit. And I am very much looking forward to doing that more in the future and experimenting with flash and things like that. So the next video that I put out is going to be something along the lines of who inspired me this year. And Mark was going to be in that video, but I'm not going to talk about him twice. And I think I spoke enough about his work in this video to show you guys that he inspired me. But the next video will be about who inspired me this year. It's going to be a lot of bigger photographers, smaller photographers, men, women, black, green, orange. doesn't matter. It's it runs the gamut of who inspired me, and I hope that it will bring some inspiration to you guys. But uh, lastly, I am on Patreon. Um, as you can see, this was a non-sponsored video, and I did talk to Squarespace, and they are okay with me putting ads at the end, and they're okay with me doing only one video a month, but I'm still on the edge with everything, so... Uh, Patreon's in the description. Prints are in the description. Handmade in the darkroom by me. Not fake prints like NFTs. NFTs suck. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for stopping by.